Hey friend, welcome to the So She Grows podcast. This show is for you if you're ready for the change, you're tired of excuses, and you're so sick of hearing the limiting excuses inside of your mind. You're ready to break through and you're ready to break free. Are you ready to finally grow? Do you want to elevate your mindset, motherhood, and marriage? If so, I am here for you and you are going to do the work. I will give you every tool and trick to blast through excuses and limiting beliefs, but you're going to have to show up for yourself. In this show, you will find non-fluffy, in-your-face, direct coaching to transform your life. Let's get it. Hey, hey, what's up, mama? Today, (laughs) totally just sounded like I was a DJ just then. Like I was like, hey, hey, what's up, mama? This is 95.7 and you're listening to the cool breeze. (laughs) summer remix by dj chachi (laughs) okay let me start that over hey friends i'm so glad you're here listening to this so she grows podcast oh my gosh that sounds so good to say you guys i hope you enjoyed the last episode today i want to expand on that a little bit further i mentioned the four pillars so if you didn't listen to the first episode go back listen to it so you know what i'm talking about one of the pillars that I was talking about um, in regards to self-fulfillment that you need, it's the four main things that I feel like need to be growing either in a good place and not stagnant to be living that really satisfying, um, fulfilling life that you deserve because it's true. You deserve it. I think that when you hear that, like you deserve, you almost feel bad about it. Like, like it's righteous or some sort of like, I don't know, we have this weird feeling about things that we deserve and then trying to measure it and and like the things that we do on a daily basis and is it worth it, does it equal, like, no, stop. Um, I, already in my head, I, I could think of all the times that I do that to myself. So don't do it because I know that's what you're doing. But one of the pillars is marriage. And so I wanted to talk about some of the ways that you really can make sure that that pillar, your marriage relationship, is in a good place or growing. So a while ago, I created this couples goal setting workbook, I think around the new year, because it's something that the husband and I do every year as we kind of reflect, but then we also try to get on the same page, which that is what one of the main things I want to talk to you about is because often we go through life and we have one set of goals or an end game in mind for ourselves and our spouse may have another end game in mind for themselves of what they feel like looks like a successful year, what looks like a successful day, um, what looks like a successful marriage to them. Um, We have different gauges of what things look like to feel like it's going well. So it's helpful if we can understand what is going on in their heads and definitely for sure what is going on in ours because we're not always very candid about that, are we, ladies? If you're like me, I like to play this game called, I want you to know how I feel without me telling you how I feel, but then I'll get mad when you're wrong because I haven't told you how I feel. Can y'all relate? (laughs) My husband is listening and I know he's laughing because he knows it's true and I'm aware of it and I try to change that. So we've gotten better by using this workbook, by having these conversations and you don't have to do this during the new year. This is definitely something you can do all year long. So where this concept originated from was I had Wendy Papazon. If you haven't heard of her, her husband, Jay Papazon, wrote a book with Gary Keller, and he's just really well-known in the real estate and self-help area. Anyway, she was on the podcast to talk about delegating wealth, creating wealth for your family uh, a while back. So if you haven't listened to that episode with her, definitely go and take a listen because it's really good. And she recently came out with her podcast of her own called Empire Building. So I want to give her credit because this whole goal setting thing that the husband and I do is mainly a basis of of seeing her do something similar with her husband. And then we have since then tweaked it and created it and made it our own based off of just simplifying it and what do we need what questions do we feel like we need to ask each other to stay on the same page so let's get to it your first step to this process of looking at your marriage to see if you're aligning right now as a couple is to step back and actually assess that like where are you guys at do you feel like communication is good do you feel like you're on the same page or do you feel like you're not on the same page if you're not on the same page definitely keep listening if you are on the same page then this is only going to add to that growth and to the connection between the both of you. And then secondly, come into this conversation with an open mind, knowing that how you approach it, when you approach it, is going to matter because 
It can come off as defensive. It can come off as um, confrontational. You definitely want this to be a conversation that is in um, good faith, like good atmosphere, good, just they know that you mean well by this conversation, that you're not coming to attack them, like you're not coming with a planner and all the things. And you're like, ah, we're going to do this. We're going to change our marriage right now. Right, We're going to have all the conversations and we're going to break it down. We're going to burn it down and then we're going to build it back up. Like, don't do that. <laughs> um, if you're like me and you're a very intense person, you like to talk things out and you like to have a result, like within the hour of you having a conversation, then that can be a sticky situation. So make sure you definitely give yourself space to have a good, healthy conversation and a good, healthy atmosphere to move forward. Okay, so you've assessed the situation, you've assessed your relationship, you know kind of how you want to approach it, maybe some things that you need to discuss, and then you're setting up a place and time that is good, a great time to have this discussion, gives you enough time, privacy, um, you know, no distractions, and now you're ready to talk. Just as a reminder, some of these questions that I'm about to go over are on the goal setting workbook. So if you go to theashcarol.com, click at the top, says goal setting workbook, I will send it to you. It has marriage questions, uh, physical questions, spiritual questions, all the good things that you need to be asking yourself and your spouse to just have an awesome and connected relationship. So here we go. There are two types of goals that we want to address here, short term and long term. In the short term, we're talking about like the day to day as far as our motherhood and our relationship relational perspective goes, right? So we want to talk about what are your goals to get you through the day successfully. So maybe it is meaning that like, hey, I really need X amount of sleep so I can function well. I can get up early before the kids get up. I can do this work and then I can be there and be present during the day. I feel less stressed when I get up before the kids and I can get breakfast on the table or at least get started, yada, yada, yada. He might have the same thing, especially if he's working out in the morning. Like these are the things that you need to talk about. And then just go through the day, like from morning, afternoon, to night of what you need to feel good. I can't speak for him, but I can speak for you in saying that like you need to add in the fact that you need to shower. Like there's things that they don't think about that they, I don't know when they think that we can get it done. Um, But I know that it's just not on their radar, our self-care things that we need like to feel good, to function. So we need to take a shower. Maybe we also need to go to the bathroom. Like, I mean, these sound silly, but when we have little ones, it's hard to do it, especially if you want to try to do it alone without somebody at your feet. Or holding on to the toilet seat while you're going potty. (laughs) It does happen. (laughs) TMI, I know my infant is now crawling and he somehow finds his way to me every time when I go to the restroom and he makes his way over to me and I'm like, no, no, (laughs) like you, I'm going to the bathroom and like trying to like get him from standing now that he's learned to pull up on my legs. He like tries to stand there while I'm going to the bathroom and it's like, this is a whole new level of not being alone while I go to the bathroom right now. Um, But So these are the things, especially if you have a newborn, um, letting your husband know like, hey, I really would like to take a shower um, every other day. So when you get home from work, if you could be aware that I'm going to pass you the baby after I'm done feeding them so I can run and jump in the shower, like navigating life with kids is a struggle. And so you guys need to be on the same page of what you need to feel good, not at the bare minimum. Like we're not shooting for like just barely making it by. No, we want to like thrive. So we need to be honest about what we need to feel good, to thrive, to be at our best, to have like that sharp mind, to feel good, to have the energy. You don't want to be dragging ass. I could say that because this is my podcast. (laughs) No, but you don't want to be dragging, right? So have that conversation. Next, you need to assess if you guys like where your marriage is at and where it's going. Talk about what you guys have been doing together as a couple. Talk about the wins as a couple. Talk about the losses. Talk about the moments of miscommunication. Talk about um, the times that were hard, that you stuck it through together, that you supported each other. Um, talk about the times where you showed up for one, one another, um, that you carried more of the load. And I don't mean have these conversations in like, uh, look what I did kind of way while you were doing this and that. I held up our, and you know, more than you, blah, blah, blah. No. This is celebrating each other um, in a way that is basically congratulating each other for being there, for being your best, or for being aware that maybe you weren't your best um, in certain situations. So do you like where your marriage is at? Okay, cool. If you do, like, let's talk about how we can continue to do that together, or let's talk about how we can make it even better. Because there are things that you certainly did throughout the year, right, that 
made you feel that it was going great. Okay, so let's pinpoint those things so we can keep on doing it. Whether it was things that he did for you, you guys did together, or you did for him. Letting each other know those things that you like that are helping you guys thrive together um, and individually will make them aware and they'll do it more, right? Okay, do you like where it's going? Do you guys both have the same plan in mind of like, where would you like to see our marriage grow? Where would you like to see it go in the next month? You don't even have to talk about the next year. Like you can take baby steps. Like what do you, what do you guys want to do in the next year together? What do you want to achieve as a couple, um, in the next few weeks as things start to open up? You know, we're in the midst of coronavirus and some of your states are still shut down, right? So maybe it's going to therapy. Maybe it's that you've realized, um, man, there's some real things that we need to work on. Um, So next steps would be like, let's really work and focus on our marriage in these next few months. And that's totally fine. I think if anything that is like super insightful and you should be extremely proud of yourselves for being aware and having the balls to make that change. Okay, after that, talk about how you guys can communicate with each other. Because throughout this process of just asking each other where your marriage is at and where it's going, you're going to see things uh, that fell through the cracks, right? Um, Because it does, especially if you have kids. You forget to tell each other things. And um, in different seasons, we have to rely on different ways to communicate and make sure that we are on the same page. This reminds me of uh, my husband and I talking about his day at work. So for me, I'm at home with the kids all day long. And usually I try not to bother my husband while he's working because he's busy. He's doing a lot of calls. I just want him to really focus throughout the day. And a lot of the times I'm running around chasing somebody with a diaper or trying to get them from killing each other. So I get busy too, right? So at the end of the night, my form of connecting is I really want to know what he's doing. Like what, you know, what's going on? I want to be interested in his business and in his um, life. And I want to encourage him. And so in my mind, it's me asking how his day was. And when they say I'm fine, that tends to not sit well with me, right? Because I just told you all my day because I've been with kids. You're an adult. I want to verbal vomit all over you. I want you to hear all the things that I did. And I want to get it all out there, right? So I expect I expected he would feel the same way, but it wasn't that way. And it wasn't until we had the conversation. I remember one night we were sitting there and I was like, you know, I don't like, it really upsets me that you don't tell me more about your day because I just told you all the things about my day, like to what I had for lunch, you know, like probably too many details. It's, you know, when you're with kids all day, it gets pretty sad how desperate you are to talk to an adult. So I was like, why won't you freaking tell me about your day? (laughs) And then he told me that it was because, you know, sometimes he likes to just come home and relax. This is a safe place. Like this is when the day is crazy, all sorts of a mess or it's stressful or there's just a lot going on. He likes to come home and forget about it and just focus on family and just enjoy us and enjoy each other and not like go back to that crazy nest of a brain you know that he had throughout the day like he just wants to let it go move on and enjoy the nice evening together as a family and so he compartmentalizes which I don't do but I didn't realize that's what it was until we talked about it so now I get it right so now I know what to ask him and I know what to expect and then I know we know how to communicate with each other right so I've expressed to him why I wanted to hear about his day he expressed to me why he didn't want to go through it detail by detail and we understood what each other's needs were and we met in the middle and we compromised so things like that guys <laughs> we need to communicate with each other better we need to um, have these conversations and be honest about what we need and what what like and ask why like that's okay but why right Um, don't be defensive and don't attack the other person. We just need to get on the same page. Okay. So now you've asked each other, you know, do you like where your marriage is at? Do you like where it's going? And then you've asked each other, how can you communicate with each other better? Now we're going to talk about how you can make more time to be intimate with each other. This area of your marriage may not be on your goals or on the same page, um, radar, but I'm sure going to tell you it's on your spouses. Like it is one of his needs. (laughs) It is also one of yours. You've just put it on the back burner because hello kiddos. Um, and all sorts of other things, right? There are other things that get in the way. So this is a time to be again, completely open and honest, to be non-judgmental, to, um, be accepting that their perspective may come off as one way because what they thought you were doing, um, you know, translated to you not finding them attractive 
or, but it was really you not finding yourself attractive. You know, like they don't know. You don't know until you have these conversations. So ask each other if you need to make more time for date nights. Do you need to make time for intimacy? Do you need to maybe schedule intimacy? Like I'm serious, guys. It's not embarrassing if you stay connected because you have to put it on the calendar. Like that is you being and taking ownership of your marriage and making it a priority. That's what that is. Um, or do you need to add romance into your relationship? So what does that look like? What does romance even mean to you? What does it mean to him? Did you ask each other? Have you asked each other that yet? Maybe right now with the kids home 24 seven and it becoming summer, maybe romance to you looks like a note left on your nightstand. Maybe it looks like them sending flowers to you occasionally. Maybe it looks like them picking up the kids And or having, you know, set up date nights and grandparents come over, babysitter comes over to surprise you for a walk around the block, like together, you know. And lastly, I think one of the most important questions is to be servants for each other, right? To put each other first, but not also at the detriment of your self-care. Just to put that in there as a side note. But last question to ask each other, and that is what does your spouse need from you the most and what do you need from them? Is it more communication? Is it their ability, your ability to connect with each other? Is it help around the house? Um, ask each other, like, hey, what do you need from me right now? Because it can change just like um, communication does in the seasons that you're in. And you need to acknowledge that things shift and needs change. And if you stay connected, even if it's the same thing, like I've found and gotten little nuggets from conversations like this with my husband, even when things around the house really haven't changed or our lifestyle really hasn't changed, there's like little nuggets where I'm like, oh, I, you know, we can tweak this a little bit and cool, move on. Sometimes it's going to be bigger changes because it's been a while or, you know, big seasonal changes or lifestyle changes. But I feel like those are the main things that you can do right now, today, tomorrow, um, as soon as possible that will have the biggest impact on making sure you guys are on the same page with each other that are huge in making sure that your marriage is growing or is good and it's not stagnant. It's a lack of communication that is going to um, put you in detrimental situations. And the longer you go, through silence or not acknowledging that there needs to be a conversation or getting through the hard stuff, the harder it's going to be to repair you guys. You cannot wait till the house is burning to decide you want to put up shutters. Like it, that's ridiculous, right? It's hard. You're going to have to put out the fire. Then you're going to have to repaint. You're going to have to rebuild like all these things until you can put those shutters on that house. That is my analogy that just came to my head right now, but you get what I'm saying, right? So if you want more of the questions, um, again, in the goal setting workbook, I talk about lots of different areas of your life, but there's more questions as far as your marriage goes that I didn't cover that will give you an opportunity to grow together. And you can get that on theashcarol.com. Click on goal setting workbook and I will send that to you. You guys, that is it for me today. I hope this episode brought you things to consider. It brought you the opportunity to grow um, as a person and then hopefully as a couple because this episode was marriage focused, right? So I hope it brought you some good tidbits that you can take and, and do what you will with them. Again, get that goal setting workbook if you need it. Hope you have an awesome day and I will catch you guys next time. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this episode, you found any bit of it useful and powerful, impactful, inspiring. I want you to know that I am so proud of So She Grows and all that is going to do for the women who listen to this podcast. And I hope that that is you today. I hope you found something great from this episode. And I want you to share it with a mom friend because she deserves all the best for her life as well. So share it review it and subscribe and let's grow together. Let's do this mamas.